lots of research this year in Ontario on relay cropping. And uh, I'm here with a man who inspired that, Mr. Jason Mock, an Indiana farmer. Now, you were up in Ontario a couple yeah. of years ago, yeah. talked about your relay cropping story. Um, as I said, we've got some trials in Ontario. You've just uh, talked about what you're doing. Uh -huh. Pretty exciting, some new stuff. What's happened? What have you been up to in the last two years? Uh, just playing with the strings, if you will. So we've made a lot of changes since I was up there in Ontario. And I've kind of seen the relationship with the two crops. you got to kind of pick a winner and a loser. Um, so we're all the way out to 60 inch rows this year uh, to give the soybeans plenty of light. And pretty excited about what I think they're going to do. They're looking pretty good. So you got 60 inch uh, wheat, yes. 20 and 40 inch soybeans. Yes. Talk about how you got there. So I, it, basically with the wheat, we want to raise it as cheap as possible. So we're uh, planting the wheat with the manure tanker itself and using that as its sole fertilizer source. So we get this kind of plant multiplication aspect and the soybeans we can plant a little bit earlier and uh, the wheat really helps in our latitude. I think up in Ontario you have these heavy clay soils. We're usually too wet, it really stresses our soybeans and it's really been a lot of kind of little ancillary benefits that I've been learning about. So you get your water management, you got a weed control aspect, and we can get really aggressive with our soybeans. We're seeing that uh, we're kind of changing the architecture a little bit on soybeans and fertile ground. Talk about that, that, that architecture. You talked about wheat and uh, you know, how, you've, how you've moved to those different row widths yes. to sort of to manage architecture. Mm -hmm. So in general, as we go from 30, we went to 37 to 60, the beans really have no idea that they're sharing the same bunk bed. Uh, the solar angles are not blocked more than maybe a few hours in the morning and evening, so they grow normally. Uh, and then once we get that weed out of the way, there's this phenomenon that I'm seeing where we're introducing light lower into the soybean plant, and they're kind of losing their motive uh, to grow vegetatively and we can just stack that soybean in place, stack the internodes, get aggressive with foliar feeds, uh, plant health uh, products, and uh, I really feel like a farmer could do that with, if he didn't have wheat, he could do it with rye, and kind of get the same benefits through crimping, but I think uh, this, this cover crops in rows and kind of intercropping thing really has the opportunity to just produce more with less and kind of take some of these inputs yeah. that we, uh, you know, rely on. You uh, you just showed some photos, great presentation. Um, wheat's off, and that those soybeans are really going gangbusters. You were talking a hundred bushels. Yes. So, uh, now we we'll, we have you've got no uh, data yet. We're still growing, but uh, yeah. you're pretty excited about what you're seeing. Yes, yes. So in 2016, we had our regular bean plot there, and the winter was 107.47, hmm. and I remember scouting them daily, and these beans look a lot better, and also. Uh, we just have not had any stress this year. We That year was dry in July. They say that's sometimes good for soybeans, uh, but these things, just the, the bean size is there. And, and, and we're pushing our maturities. The 3-4 is what hit 107. We got from a 2-8 to a 4-8, 17 different chances to get over 100. So I think there'll be several go over 100, and I think some of them might go near maybe 110, 120. We will see. I'm losing some sleep at night yeah. thinking about it. <laughs> hey, talk a little bit about where uh, reload cropping goes from here for you. You talked about, hey, let's run with the agronomy, then you'll tackle the logistics and the equipment. You know, whereabouts are you and, uh, you know, where do you take it? I'm at a real exciting place. So uh, exposure like this has opened up so many doors. I'm starting to work with universities on actually designing equipment that I can actually put a patent on and, and maybe scale, and it'll help me scale in the future. Uh, but for me, we just want to do more of it on our farm, and hopefully we can get into kind of the sharing economy in the future and use these cropping systems uh, to distribute these confined feeding operations, manure, much better to farmers that will really take and have more value with that fertility than a farmer that has saturated soils. Hey, you got to come back to Ontario and tell us uh, how you made out this year? Yeah, I'd love to. Well, there you go. Invite him up and I'm sure he'll come back. Hey, Jason, thanks for taking the time. Thank you.